All right, on this episode, I'm going to explain how to run onboard air, whether it be for airbag suspension or for airing up your tires, etc., on a off-road vehicle. First and foremost, you have to have a compressor that works. You can try your old compressor first, get everything set up. If you're not getting proper pressure, then shit can the compressor and replace it with a new version of that one otherwise you'd want to buy a small little sandin 7b10 and make it fit on your motor there's adapter kits and brackets everywhere then you need a longer belt you're going to have an input and an output and a power wire the power wire depending on your compressor is either going to need power to activate the clutch or power to disengage the clutch most times it's power to activate the clutch so you're going to have a relay inside a switch is going to be turned on and that switch is going to send power all the way back to the tank here and here you're going to have a pressure switch on the tank that is going to turn on anything below 150 and it'll turn off at 150 so it's normally a 120 to 150 is what it'll say or a 90 to 120 it just depends on the situation and the bags you're going to be running once the power comes back here from the switch this switch tells it to continue back on it goes up to the front and then turns on the relay which turns on power to the compressor on the intake side you're going to want a filter and an oiler and you're going to want some pag oil i look on your labels to see what type of pag oil it'll say right there it says pag 46 so i've got some pag 46 oil in here with a drip and it drips like every second or every half second and that keeps that from burning up then I've got this guy because the whole motor is going to want to shake and that could shake this loose. I've got this coil going to a rubber line so that'll absorb any vibration. And then the hard line goes down the frame rail back to the back and it pops out right here. Then I have a de-oiler that will pull the pack oil back out of the air so it doesn't end up in my tank or my bags or my valves. And then when this gets relatively full, I can take it back to the front and pour it right back into the oiler. I ran half inch so that this pressures up as fast as possible. Then you have a half inch check valve. So if anything from here forward breaks, the tank will hold the air in. This check valve will keep it in. Then on the outputs, I need to have two check valves here. It depends on the valves you have. These are diaphragm style valves and they need air pressure on one side of the valve to keep them shut. So if my tank loses pressure, so will my bags. So I'm gonna buy a couple more of these guys, boop, 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 and then that way, if anything on this side of the tank pops, then my bags will hold pressure and I won't lose pressure out of the air suspension and then I can still get home. Then the air comes from there into the valve bodies. The valve distributes it to each bag, depending on what you need. And then there's little lines going to each gauge, which then shows your tank pressure, tank control switch. If this switch is on, the power is going to the pressure switch. And if the pressure switch sees anything below 150, it's going to kick on the compressor. Once it sees 150, it stops sending power to the compressor. And then I can just kill this if I don't want the compressor to kick on. And you have front and rear bags and the freaking ice cream man. Ice cream in Colorado. That's how you do onboard air. If you wanted to run air for, let's say, airing up your tires on a four x four, this is so if I ever need air, I can uh, use it, air up my tires, etc. This goes to the air horn up front because also you can have a train horn if you're gonna run air. Questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comments below. Like if you like, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, keep on modding.